I've been let out the photo gear new shed and I've been testing this. It's the Canon EOS 200D. Now I get it, it's an entry level DSLR, so it isn't all that exciting, but just bear with me a few minutes because there's actually quite a lot to like about the EOS 200D. In fact, I've got a feeling it may appeal to a few different types of photographers. So let's get the basics out of the way. The EOS 200D replaces the 100D, which was the smallest and lightest DSLR ever. Now the 200D is a whopping 46 grams heavier. So that means that a new record has been created. It's the smallest and lightest DSLR with a flip out screen. With the EOS 200D weighing 453 grams, it's around 80 grams lighter than the equivalent Nikon, the D5300. In terms of build quality, the plastic body of the EOS 200D feels very light, but it's not weak. It's robust and it doesn't creak or wobble. However, if you are coming down from an EOS 5D or an 80D, something in that kind of line, then it is gonna feel a little bit plasticky and a bit probably like a toy. Don't be fooled, the sensor in the EOS 200D has a 24.2 million pixel resolution with dual pixel AF and a sensitivity range of ISO 200 to 25,600. In fact, it's the same sensor that's found in the EOS 77D and the EOS 800D, and it's presumably similar, if not the same, as the sensor found in the EOS 80D. So despite its entry level credentials, in terms of image quality, it should be able to hold its own against cameras much higher up in Canon's lineup. As you can see, it's a capable APS-C sensor. And unless you have a terribly overexposed image that you wanna make huge drastic adjustments to, there's more than enough detail that can be recovered from the highlights and shadows. However, don't expect to make extreme adjustments like you can with some of its competitors that have very similar sensors. It's a similar story when it comes to sensitivity and noise. The images here you're seeing have been opened in Lightroom and saved. No manual adjustments, so they have nothing but those opening default settings applied. The ISO 100 400 images look crisp and clean, and it isn't really until you hit ISO 1600 that noise starts to become noticeable. ISO 6400 is about as high as I would personally push this camera. At this point, the noise does start to eat away at those finer details, and it's more prevalent in the shadow areas. And so that leaves ISO 12,800 and 25,600. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I generally advise don't use the two highest sensitivity settings on any given camera. And that advice is just as applicable here. And so the image quality from the EOS 200D is more than capable of producing some great images. But it's not revolutionary or groundbreaking in terms of its low light capabilities, noise levels, dynamic range, all of that stuff. It just produces good images that most photographers are going to find quite pleasing. So the image quality is one thing, but what I think the key feature of the sensor is, is the dual pixel AF. Whilst the EOS 200D has a meager 9.0 AF system when using its small viewfinder, the dual pixel AF means it has almost edge to edge phase detection autofocus when it's used in its live view mode. For those that don't know, phase detection autofocus is faster and more accurate than the contrast detection autofocus systems that many DSLR and mirrorless cameras use when in their live view modes. Perhaps more importantly, there isn't that bounce that you get with contrast detection. And that of course is very important when it comes to shooting video. Having used the touchscreen to focus video, it's really great to see the focus just shift really quickly and smoothly, steadily from point A to B. Even when shooting still images, I've found myself using the live view more than the viewfinder. So that's entry level photographers more than covered, but what about those thinking of using it for video? Well, obviously this is a Canon camera at the lower end of the range, so you can just forget about 4K video right now. But is that really a deal breaker? Well, probably not if you're just starting out creating some social media content. But if you've got a bit more experience, 
it may be best giving the EOS 200D a swerve. Video is limited to 1080p at 60 frames a second. So don't be thinking that you're gonna be doing 120 frames a second slow motion footage, but it does have a very good and easy to use time-lapse feature built in. This can be set to a fully manual exposure mode or for beginners, there's an automatic exposure mode. Now I've used the time-lapse mode and I found it to be really easy to use. It's produced some really nice results. So I'd actually previously shot this time-lapse earlier in the day. It was quite a nice scene with some sea mist moving in and that solitary tree blowing in the wind until a herd of cows came in and most of the time lapses of a cows behind. Image stabilization for video is reliant on Canon's lens-based system. I found that the stabilization works well when you're trying to maintain a frame on a static subject, but as soon as you start walking around, the movements do tend to get quite jumpy and jerky. And that's about it for the EOS 200D in the video department. With the kit lens, you've got your basics covered, but pair this with a Canon 10 to 18 millimeter lens and you've got a good entry level video setup for vlogging. You can flip the screen around to easily frame yourself. You've got face detection with dual pixel AF, which is gonna make sure that you're always nice and sharp and in focus, whilst the hot shoe and the mic socket provide good audio to make sure that your sound is nice and crisp. The camera's weight and size mean that it's easy to carry around with you and you won't end up with that one solitary huge bicep from holding it out in front of you all the time. Chuck in the time-lapse mode and vloggers are good to go. And so to the final little corner of the market that I think the EOS 200D may find itself in and that is as a backup camera or mirrorless alternative. Canon's EOS M range is finally starting to deliver the goods with the M5 and the M6 cameras but for die-hard DSLR users who want to use their existing range of Canon EF lenses, the EOS 200D may provide a surprising alternative. For starters, there's no adapters required. Just mount your existing lenses and you have a pared down DSLR that is very similar in size and weight to Canon's own EOS M5. I just think a few 5D, 80D users might be a little bit frustrated with not having some of those controls directly to hand straight away. And it may take a while to get used to using the quick menu touchscreen if you're not too used to it. I think the EOS M5 is still the better choice. It's more DSLR-like in shape. It's got a large electronic viewfinder and it's got a lot of controls around the camera. So it's probably gonna be more suited to those who are looking for something smaller and lighter to take on their travels but the EOS M5 is more expensive than the 200D. Now that's worth considering as it is gonna be a second camera, one that you're not gonna be using so much. So that's about it for the EOS 200D, a solid, basic, entry-level camera for photographers with excellent image quality, great autofocus when you're using Live View, and that also makes it great for those starting out vlogging and dabbling their toes in videography. As a backup camera, yes, it's small, light, and it is also affordable. You're not gonna to have to change your lenses and use adapters. However, you might find it a little bit frustrating, so I still feel the EOS M5 is gonna have the edge for you. So what do you guys think of this, the EOS 200D? Have Canon done a good job? Are there any features that you're impressed with? Are there any features that you'd like to see? Will you be buying one? If you've got any questions or comments about the camera, leave them in the comments box below. We'll do our best to answer them and get back to you. And don't forget to hit subscribe because we've got lots more coming up in the next few weeks. We don't want you to miss out on all the latest photo gear news and reviews.